One of the biggest predictors of having a strong, healthy brain for life is curiosity. People who are more curious tend to use their minds more and they grow smarter over time. They are open to new ideas. They love learning new things and they tend to reflect a lot on their experiences. The great news is that no matter how old you are, you can always improve your mental health. The brain is much like a muscle in the sense that it can be trained and strengthened. And it's also like a muscle in that if it's not used, it can atrophy over time. And according to a study published in the Journal of American Medical Association, frequent participation in mentally stimulating activities not only makes people grow smarter, it reduces the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Today, we'll take a look at 10 exercises that will make you smarter. And you'll also discover the overlooked link between physical exercise and brain health, a silly visualization trick that boosts your memory, a simple but powerful exercise that activates a critical part of your brain. But first, could you do us a favor? We at Brain Health Smarts are here to deliver the latest information about how to maximize your brain's potential. Please help support our channel by liking this video and sharing it with others. Plus, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. That way, you will be the first to know about our latest videos and updates. Also, stick around until the end. We will give you a free gift that has been designed to help maximize the potential of your brain. Now then, growing smarter has many benefits. You become more adaptable when circumstances change, in life or in work. You find it easier to solve problems. You can perform complex tasks in less time. You can do more and achieve more. And those who continue to learn tend to have less neurological problems in the future than those who don't. There are several ways you can stimulate your brain to create and strengthen neural pathways. The method that produces the least significant results is performing simple mental activities, such as doing a word find. That's not to say that these activities aren't mentally stimulating, but they aren't enough to help your brain grow stronger and smarter. There was a study in the Journal of Psychological Science that illustrated this really well. They studied senior citizens and found that those who performed simple mental activities, such as crossword puzzles, gained little measurable benefit. Whereas those who learned a complex skill, such as photography or how to knit or similar skills, gained far greater improvements in their overall memory. It's also important to be aware that cognitive decline can happen early on. In fact, one study led by Arkana Singh Mano discovered that cognitive decline can happen as early as age 45. While it used to be assumed that it didn't happen before 60, new studies are showing that brain deterioration can happen early. If you want to achieve more in life while putting a stop to Alzheimer's, dementia, and other brain disorders, then you have to do something now. So without further ado, here are the 10 best exercises for your brain to make you smarter and prevent cognitive decline. Physical exercise. When you think of mental exercises, you tend to think of brain teasers or learning a new skill. You may not think of physical exercise. However, there is a link between physical exercise and improving the state of your mind. When you work out, your brain releases endorphins. These feel-good chemicals can help you de-stress, allow you to focus, and energize you. Another reason why working out is beneficial, it may improve your memory. When you perform aerobic exercise, it may target parts of your brain associated with memory, particularly the dentate gyrus. Aerobic exercises also prevents brain shrinkage, which can happen in your elderly years. But what about the science behind it? Well, according to a study done by Western Sydney University in 2017, it was discovered that aerobic exercise helps with memory function and even maintaining brain health. They conducted 14 trials with 737 different brain scans, and the age ranges were from 24 all the way up to 76, respectively. The research demonstrated that while it didn't have an effect on the volume of the hippocampal area, it did increase the size of the left part of the hippocampus in the subjects. It also produced something called BDNF in the subjects, which helps to prevent age decline in the subjects too. So yes, there are brain benefits from exercising alone. Another reason why exercise can help your brain is because it may help you sleep better. The exact numbers are not known, but there are many studies that prove a link between exercise and reducing insomnia. With that said, do not work out too close to bedtime. Working out energizes you, which may have the opposite desired effect. Always have an hour to unwind for bed. In order to reap the benefits of exercise, you don't need to be a star athlete. 
adding just 15 minutes of exercise to your routine helps your mind. Learning a new skill. One reason our brains go bad is because society acts like there's a cutoff date for learning a new skill. You may be discouraged from learning how to play the guitar, learning a new language, or learning another skill because you are too old. Don't think this way. While learning something such as a new language is easier when you're young, it's totally possible. Like we said in the intro, learning something new can help your memory and make you smarter. How can you turn this into an exercise? Simple. Take a piece of paper, write down three skills you want to learn. Pick one. Then read up on the skill you've chosen. Break down learning the skill into small goals. For example, if you're learning a new language, try to learn a word each day, then learn a sentence. Many think that learning a new skill requires hours of time each day, which many don't have. However, this doesn't have to be the case. Remember, there is no time limit for learning something new. Flashcards. Remember flashcards from school? Well, they are actually hugely beneficial. Flashcards help with mitigating the forgetting curve. What's that? Well, in general, when you learn something new, if you want to remember it for a long time, you need to review it. In this graph, it shows when you learn something new, you forget some of it over time. But the beauty of repetition is that the more you do it, the less you forget. Flashcards are a fantastic way to quickly review information and they have been around for over a century. In 1885, Hermann Ebbinghaus used these and became the first psychologist to study learning and memory in this way. He used memory experiments through testing, association, and even nonsense syllables. Through this, he managed to figure out the forgetting curve too, and when it begins. So how do you use flashcards to boost your memory of new information? Simply write a trigger word or question on one side of the flashcard, and on the other side, put the answer. Then, when you want to review it, you simply look at the word or question and see if you remember the answer. If you do remember, that's great! Put it away and review again in the future. If you don't, look at the answer and make sure you understand it. And test yourself again five minutes later. If you get it correct, it has entered your brain and you need to review it again soon to prevent forgetting. The best process that we recommend is to review the information one hour later, then one day, then one week, then one month, then three months, then six months later. By then, your brain will have formed so many connections to it across multiple time periods, and you'll have excellent recall for the long term. In one interesting study about flashcards, a group of scientists illustrated how they help improve long-term memory of information. In one group, they got students to use flashcards to help remember new information. And in the other group, they simply studied the information but didn't use flashcards. In the first exam, the flashcards people scored about the same. But then over time, they began to outperform those who didn't use the flashcards. By the third exam, the ones who had used flashcards had 87% higher average recall than those who didn't use flashcards. So yes, if you want to learn something, whether it be a language or even just to study for the long term, flashcards will help. And it helps your brain health too. Draw a map. Why draw a map? We live in the world of GPSs, so you won't need it, right? That's not the point of this exercise. Instead, the point is to recall all the small details of your surroundings. First, start small. You can draw your neighborhood, for example. As you draw, try to think of all the little details. Don't just sketch out all the main roads. Spend a time trying to figure out the map, all without looking anything up on your GPS. Then, once you've made the map, look at an actual map. There's a good chance you may have missed some locations or got a few details wrong. This is because the smaller details are put in the part of the brain that stores temporary information. These details are then dropped into the recycling bin of your mind. You probably didn't notice every store or every tree. However, you may be able to soon enough. By drawing maps, you can eventually learn how to put all the small details together. This may allow you to improve your memory through training it to focus on all the little details. Now for a cool memorization technique. Chunking. Chunking is a technique used to improve your short-term memory. It takes a short-term concept you must recall and breaks it down into memorable chunks. To put it in simple terms, your phone number is the biggest example of chunking. Let's take a look at this number. 202-555-0430. Try memorizing that. It's a challenge to remember, isn't it? Your brain sees that as useless information, so it doesn't put much effort into remembering it, especially if it's a giant sequence of numbers with no breaks. 
Now let's write out the number like a traditional phone number. 202-555-0430. It's much easier for you to recall it when you have everything spaced out. Chunking actually does help with reducing the working memory load too. According to a study done by M. Susa Thalman and K. Oberauer in the Journal of Experimental Psychology, Learning, Memory, and Cognition, they did four experiments to see what chunking does on the memory. It was discovered that in these four experiments that the chunking recall was improved and that the non-chunked memory did stick around. So your working memory could hold on to both pieces of information. However, this best worked if the elements in such were overlapping. The working memory, however, is not fixated on certain chunks of numbers though, so as long as they're connected, they can be chunked. If you're trying to learn a new language, why not chunk some small words together? This can boost your memory quite well. Think about a big life goal of yours. Try to break it down into smaller chunks. We're halfway through the top 10 exercises that will make you smarter, but before we proceed, it's time to reveal your free gift. Brain Food Secrets, the 15 worst and best foods for your brain. Discover the foods that can enhance mental focus, boost mood, ease depression, and much more. Simply click the link in the description below to grab your free copy now. Now, onto our list. Try new foods. You are what you eat. When we were kids, we tended to be picky eaters. As we grow older, we start to be more open to trying new foods. However, there comes a point where you may start eating the same foods over and over again. Or maybe you're still just as big of a picky eater now as when you were a child. In order to improve your brain, why not eat something new? Don't be afraid to go to the international section of the supermarket. Look up some recipes that are unfamiliar to you. The first reason why this is good for your brain is obvious. You're trying something new. However, the second reason is more surprising. See, the olfactory system in your brain uses your nose receptors to distinguish odors. If you're smelling new odors of food, this may evoke emotions and inspire you. Not only that, but trying the same foods over and over can be bad for your health. If you're afraid of eating anything new, it can lead to a poor diet. This can lead to poor health overall. It can increase your risk of cardiovascular diseases and diabetes. So next time you're in the market, try something new. Your brain will thank you for it later. Create new mnemonics. In school, chances are your teachers use mnemonics to help you remember. One example is teaching your ABCs in a memorable song. Another example is naming off the planets by saying, my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas, or served us noodles for our younger crowd who grew up without Pluto being a planet. Mnemonics can be used for anything, including name learning. According to a study done by S. Breedard, a European psychologist, he discovered that face name mnemonic means are efficient for learning names in both younger and older people. By spacing the retrieval of the names too, people can use mental imagery to better remember these people. It was also discovered that using this for learning strategies on implicit learning rather than explicit memory processes also help stimulate learning, especially learning names. So yes, you can use this to remember names of those people that are on the tip of your tongue that you can't remember. It will help you not only to look better, but it will also help with improving memory too. When you're trying to learn a new skill, use them. Think of clever rhymes, songs, or abbreviations. For example, the Spanish word for underwear is calzoncillos. In order to remember this, visualize a calzone wearing underwear. These little associations can allow you to learn much faster than if you weren't using mnemonics. It seems silly, but it does work. Give it a try and see how it works for you. Change up your routine. This is a valuable exercise to try because, let's face it, a majority of our lives consist of routines. Routines are valuable, don't get us wrong. Falling out of your routine can be a sign of depression. Meanwhile, getting back into a routine may treat depression. Instead of abandoning your routine, try to change it up. Let's say you always walk your dog in the morning. Why not try walking your pooch at night? If your job allows for a flexible schedule, try working at a different time of day. Do everything you're supposed to do in a day, but just mix it up a little. This can sound simple enough, but you would be surprised with how effective it is. Your brain is adapting to new changes, and even if they seem small, it's keeping your mind guessing. This can improve your memory. Not only that, but it may help you open up to other new ideas. Right, here's one that's a definite brain booster. Right. After this video, get out a notebook and write something down. It can be anything. What you see in front of you. What you're grateful for. Ideas for that story you always wanted to write. 
having a journal handy can help. Writing stimulates the part of the brain known as the Reticular Activating System, or RAS, which is largely responsible for our ability to focus. So activating your RAS allows your brain to filter unimportant information and zero in on what really matters. And in turn, that allows you to prioritize your goals and other important things in your life. Furthermore, writing is also good for your memory overall. In fact, one study led by Martin Lutz from the University of Griefswald in Germany discovered that certain networks and regions in the brain in some subjects were different. The scientists found that writers actually have brains similar to those who do complex actions such as sports or music. It was also discovered when he asked for volunteers to copy the text that it isn't the same as creative writing in that those regions weren't activated. So when they brainstormed, it activated the vision processing centers, helping them work. It also activated the region that's crucial for holding multiple pieces of learning. So yes, writing does activate the brain. As long as you write, your brain should be all right. Now let's talk about the number one exercise for your mind. That is mindfulness meditation and yoga. Want to boost your brain to the max? Try being more mindful. Mindfulness is the practice of being aware of the present. Instead of worrying about the future or regretting the past, you're in the here and now. Mindfulness allows your brain to observe what's around you better. One example exercise is to close your eyes when you shower. Feel the textures, smells, and temperatures coming at you. Try to shower with your eyes closed and see how well that works. Another technique? Lie on the ground and perform a body scan. Imagine yourself scanning your body from head to toe. Body scans help us be aware of what's in the moment. Meditation and mindfulness go hand in hand. Simply put, meditation is when you deep breathe while clearing your mind. It allows you to calm yourself and is useful as a relaxation technique. Now, what does that have to do with boosting your brain? Well, one study from the Association for Applied Psychophysiology and Biofeedback found that if one meditated, it may increase their IQ. How much? By up to 23%. If you want to be more intelligent, meditation and mindfulness are the number one exercise for a reason. Not only can you boost your IQ, but meditation may help pump those creative juices. Having trouble focusing? Meditation can help. Want to be more self-aware? Try meditation. Also consider yoga too. According to a study from the University of Waterloo, even doing 25 minutes of hatha yoga with mindfulness can boost the executive functions of the brain, improve cognitive abilities, and also help control responses. 31 participants did this, and from this, the findings discovered they were better at doing executive tasks. Hatha yoga is common, easy to begin with, and offers more than just benefits for brain health. It's amazing for the body too, and reduces stress as well. And that about does it for this video. But before you go, don't forget to grab your free gift. Brain Food Secrets, the 15 worst and best foods for your brain. Discover the foods that can enhance mental focus, boost mood, ease depression, and much more. Simply click the link in the description below. So are there any exercises you use to improve your intelligence? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to get more brain-friendly content from us. Thanks for watching. We're Brain Health Smarts, and we hope you have a fantastic brain-healthy day.